All right, so now we start chapter number two, which is about descriptive statistics. So as we discussed earlier in chapter number one, there are two uh, categories of statistics. There are two types of statistics. Number one is descriptive statistics, where we describe the data. And number two is inferential statistics. So in chapter number two, we cover most of the areas under descriptive statistics. Right, so the very first section is about frequency distributions and their graphs. Now, what is a frequency? Frequency is the number of time that a particular event has occurred. And a frequency distribution is just a table. It's a table that shows classes, right, or categories or intervals of data with a count of the number. Count of the number, which means frequency. So frequency is basically count of the number related to each category or each class or each interval. Now the frequency is denoted by F, right? The frequency F of a class is the number of data points in that class. So next we see this example that there are one, two, three, four, and five classes. And these classes start from a point and they end at a point and they have their relevant frequency in front of them. So let's see that how can we explain these values. So the class starts from a particular value and this value is called lower class limit, okay? So in the first class, one is lower class limit. In the second class, five is the lower class limit. In the third class, nine is the lower class limit. Next we see that the class ends at a point which is called the upper class limit. So four is the upper class limit, eight is the upper class limit in the second class, 12 is the upper class limit in this third class. And these are the corresponding frequencies. So from one to four, there are four values. So the number of count is four here. From five to eight, there are five values. Nine to 12, there are three values. 13 to 16, there are four values. And 17 to 20, there are two values. And if you want to add them up, you can add them up and you will find out that the sum of these frequencies would be equal to 18. So this particular sign is sigma, sigma f and sigma denotes summation or sum of the values. Next, we're gonna discuss class width. Now class width is the distance between lower or upper limits of consecutive classes. Now, what does that mean? That means that the distance between the lower class points or the upper class points, and this is mostly the same. For example, if you look at these two values, one to five, there is a difference of four. And if you look at the upper class limits, you will see the difference is same, four. So what is this four? This four is class width, okay? So five minus one is equal to four, and nine minus five is equal to four, 13 minus nine is equal to four. So the distance between all these classes is basically same, and which is called class width. Now, one more thing that you need to understand is the range in the data. Now, range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum value in the data set. So for example, this is our data set, two, six, eight, and 12. So what would be the range? If I denote range with R, the range would be 12, which is the maximum value, minus two, which is the lowest value. So we have 10 as our range. So in order to come up with the class width, first we need to calculate the range. All right, here are the guidelines which we will follow to construct a frequency distribution. Number one, we need to decide on the number of classes to include. So if you're given any question in the exam, you have to look at this statement, whether you have been given number of classes or not. If the number of classes are not given, I would recommend to make classes between five to 10 classes. 10 can be too many, so I would like to, I would like to stick with five or six or seven, but I, also like to stick with odd numbers, like five, seven, 
and nine. And there is a technical issue here. If you, if you use even numbers, they're okay, they're good to go. But sometimes, as I'm saying, sometimes this happens that in even numbers of classes, you usually, usually you are unable to put the last values or the maximum values in the last class of the data set. So in order to make sure that that does not happen, it is better to use odd numbers. Okay, then the number of classes should be between five and 20. So if you're working on a software, you can choose as many classes because it would be a lot easier than uh, manually working with classes. So you can use between five and 20. Otherwise, it may be difficult to detect any patterns. So if your classes are less than five or more than 20, I would say more than 10, it becomes very difficult to actually come up with a pattern in the data. Number two, find the class width. Now, how we actually find the class width? First of all, you determine the range, which means you detect the maximum value with the minimum value, okay? So if you detect the minimum value from maximum value, that gives you range of the data. Divide the range by the number of desired classes, desired number of classes. So range would be divided by desired number of classes and round up to the next convenient number. So this is very important. If you get an answer in decimal points, so you have to round it up to the next number. For example, if you get an answer of 6.2, you have to round it up to seven. Now this is not a mathematical number. Okay, I mean to say that this is not something which should be called a mathematical product. It is just the number of classes. So number of classes can be six or seven. So it is better to round up to the next level by, because you want to make sure that your classes are exhaustive. They include all possible values in the data set. Number three, number three is to find the class limits. You can use the minimum entry as the lower limit of the first class, which means that if two, eight, 10 and 12 is the data set, you can start the very first class from the lowest value, which is two. Then to find the remaining lower limits, add the class width to the lower limit of the preceding class. For example, if the first class is from two to two to eight, the second class would be two plus seven. As I told you, seven is the class width. So two plus seven, nine. So next class would start from nine and the next class would start from nine plus seven, 16. Okay, so how we come up with the up class limit? Since the next class starts from nine, the previous class should end at eight. And what should be the upper class limit for the next class? Eight plus seven, which is 15. And 15 plus seven, that is 20, 22. Okay, so this is how actually we come up with the lower limits and the upper limits. Number four, make a tally mark for each data entry in the row of the appropriate class. So you, you want to strike down one value and make a tally mark in front of the class where it falls. Then strike the other one and make a tally mark. And there is one particular thing which I want you to understand with the tally marks. There are four vertical marks and then you have a, a diagonal mark to show a set of tally marks. So there are a set of five. Okay, so this shows there are five values in a class. For example, this shows there are three values in a class. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This shows that there are seven values in the class. All right. So count the tally marks to find the total frequency. This means that you find out the total frequency by counting the number of marks in front of every class, right? So as I told you, five, three, and seven examples, that these are the uh, marks that you count in order to come with, with the frequency. Here's an example. The following data represent the ages of 30 students in a statistical class, statistics class. Construct a frequency distribution that has five classes. So here we can see that we are given the information about 30 students. That means there will be 30 data values 
and how many classes we need to make five classes all right good so this is the data and uh, the very first thing that we need to calculate is range which means we need to identify the maximum and the minimum value in this data set let's see so first of all we have five classes to prepare in this problem then we have the maximum number and the maximum number is 54 and the uh, minimum number is 18. So 54 minus 18 is 36. You have a range of 36. And when we divide 36 by 5, we get 7 point, I think 7.2. So we round it off to the next number, which is 8. Okay. As I told you, we always round up to the next number if we get the answer in decimal points regarding a class width. All right, so next we build up lower and upper class limits. So if you remember, the lowest value we had in the data set was 80. So the lower limit of the very first class should be 80. Then what was the, what was the class width we found? Eight. So 18 plus eight is 26 plus eight, 34 plus eight, 42 plus eight, 50. Okay, again, so if the second class starts from 26 the first class should end at the limit of 25 and 25 plus 8 33 that should be the upper limit of the second class and plus 8 and so on so the last class will end at 58 then we have to tally mark for each data entry in the appropriate classes and we will see how we calculate the frequency for that so after Tally marking the whole data set, we saw that there are 13 values that fall between 18 and 25. And there are eight values that fall between 26 and 33. There are four values that fall between 34 and 41. There are three values that fall between 42 to 49. And there are only two values that fall between 50 to 57. Okay. So in total, the submission of is 30 in total we have 30 observations so this is this is important i always recommend to total up the frequency why so you can uh, verify that total number of values have been considered in preparing the frequency distribution okay right so the next uh, concept is to calculate the midpoint of a frequency distribution how we calculate the midpoint we simply add the lower class limit with the upper class limit and divide it by two. So we basically take an average of the up lower class limit and the upper class limit. So for example, we have a class where lower class limit is one and the upper class limit is four. We add them up. That gives us a product of five and we divide that by two and we come up with 2.5. So the midpoint for this class would be 2.5. Okay, again, continuing the example that we had, if we calculate the midpoints for all the classes, you can see what we have to do. We only have to add the limits, lower limit and upper limit with each other and divide it by two and we will get the answer. So the midpoint for the first class is 21.5. For the second class, it is 29.5, 37.5 for the third class, 44.5 for the fourth class and 53.5 for the last class. All right. Next is relative frequency. Now, uh, one idea that you need to understand here is the proportion. And we will see that proportions are really important in statistics. What is proportion? Proportion means part of the sum. So whatever total values or total chunk you have, a part of that is called the particular proportion okay so in order to calculate proportions which can be denoted by p and in this case they can be denoted by rf or relative frequency we will try to calculate the frequency by using this formula so what is relative frequency we use the class frequency of a particular class and we divide that with sample size and sample size is the total number of frequencies. So if there is a class um, with limits of one to four and it has a frequency of four, 
whereas the total frequency is 18, your relative frequency should be 4 divided by 18. So here you can see that 4 divided by 18 is equal to 0 0.222. Or maybe this can be written as 22.2%, which means that the class which has uh, the lower limit of 1 and upper limit of 4, the values that fall between 1 and 4, they are exactly 22.2% of the complete data set. All right. So proportion for them is 22.2. Next is an example of the age of students that we are following. So if we, we can calculate relative frequency for that example. Again, using the same formula, using the class frequency and dividing that frequency with the total frequency. Okay, so we come up with the answer. And one more interesting thing that you need to note is that when you add up all the relative frequencies, they make up to one, which is 100%. So basically we divide 100% into different proportions. We have 43.3% of the values in the first class, 26.7% in the second class, 13.3% in the third class, 10% in the fourth class, and 6.7% in the last class. In total, they make 100%. Okay, next concept is cumulative frequency. And by cumulative, we mean that you keep adding up. So the cumulative frequency of a class is the sum of frequency for that class and all the previous classes. Now let's see how we calculate that. So the first class has a frequency of 13. What if we add 13 with eight of the next class? That gives us 21, okay. And if we add 21 with four of the next class, that gives us 25. So these values, 13, 21, and 25, these are cumulative values. And because we are accumulating frequency, they should be called cumulative frequency. So you can see 13 plus eight, 21, 21 plus four, 25, 25 plus 3, 28, and 28 plus 2, 30. So in total, you have 30 observations. That means the last class should have a total of 30. Why? Because when, you, when we accumulate, we can only accumulate 100%. And the last class will have the 100% values in it, and those are 30 values. Okay, so these were different kinds of frequencies. Why we calculated them? We calculated them so we can prepare different types of graphs. Next, we're gonna see those graphs.